Astrophotography has changed. The way we capture and share the night sky has evolved. Join me for the next chapter of the Astro Backyard. Finally, sorry to make you guys wait so long. I missed you. I'm here and I'm back. It's time to take some pictures of space from the backyard again, and this time, let's make it count. Gosh, it's supposed to be clear tonight and more importantly, not 40 degrees. We've been here exactly a month or a month and one day. And for the first time, I finally feel like we're somewhat settled. It's been a heat wave since we moved in too. So it's like, it's so hot that you just couldn't go outside and do anything without getting soaking wet. So I'm looking forward to getting to work, being able to go outside without dying. What have you shot since we've been here? Nothing. Why not? It's been very hot. And I'm stuck in here putting things away. Tonight, it's all about the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, a beautiful deep sky object in the constellation Cepheus. I'll point my camera and telescope towards this area of the sky, track it, and photograph it all night long. At the end of the video, I'll share my final result. As usual, I'm testing some new equipment tonight, and as you can see, I'm finally shooting from the new house. It's been a busy few weeks, but I finally feel like we're starting to get settled in. Let me get you guys up to speed. The observatory is still in storage. I'll get to it eventually, but there were so many not so little things we had to do first, such as putting up a fence at the rear of the property so Rudy doesn't run off into the sunset. Honestly, he would never actually leave, but he would chase a rabbit and possibly a deer. We also took down 13 dead pine trees that were right on the property line. They were pretty tall too, so I've got a bit more sky to the southeast, which is really nice to have. The Right after the trees came down, I watched the full moon rising just over the horizon, over the field behind us. So I think I made the right call. The garage is another story. This space is one of the main reasons we bought this place, but it's an absolute disaster in there right now. Everything kind of just got dumped in here when we moved in and I have to go through everything and organize it. There's nobody here. It's okay, you can go back outside. As you can see, I've got a temporary workstation set up here, but I think I wanna replace this plastic folding table with something a little more permanent eventually. I have a few cool ideas for what I wanna do in here. One is to get an all sky cam for outside that I can monitor from in here and on my phone. I also wanna build out that section of the garage over there into kind of a lounge area where I can both film and just hang out. The previous owner had it roughed in for a bar, so that might be kind of cool too. I also wanna put a huge star map up on the wall, so like 12 feet or something. How cool would that be? Tonight, I'll be testing ZWO's new AM5 mount. Not only is it ZWO's first astrophotography mount ever, but it's the first strain wave drive mount I've ever used. The main things that you'll notice is how compact it is and that there's no counterweight. I've only run this setup once previous to tonight and it worked fantastic. It forced me to change up my setup ritual a little bit, but I'll get back to that in a minute. I'm running the rig with the ZWO ASI Air Plus, which I'm sure ZWO hopes you all are. Plate solving, guiding, everything runs so smooth and quick and I do it all from my phone. If you haven't watched Tim Connolly's extensive review and tutorial of this mount, you really should. He's had his for about six months now and knows it inside and out. A setup this size isn't exactly pushing this counterweightless mount's capabilities to its limits, but with this setup you see here, I averaged a total error of about one arc second when auto-guiding. So it performs just about as well as a full-featured computerized equatorial mount like the Skywatcher EQ6, but without the counterweight. So is not having to use a counterweight a big deal? Not really, if you're shooting in the backyard like this. Where it really comes into play is if you're traveling. The AM5 is not really a whole lot bigger than a Star Tracker, yet it can carry 30 pounds without a counterweight. Don't worry, I still love you. EQ6. 
I'm still getting used to the electronically assisted polar alignment feature on the ASI Air. I just miss my manual polar scope. When I ran through the polar alignment routine the other day, it said I was ranked 18,000th of all ASI users in terms of speed and accuracy. So there's a little room for improvement. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the AM5 plays really nice with the ASI Air, which is convenient for me because I've been using it nonstop since October. If you're using a non-ASI camera and a different imaging software, you'll have to see what others are are doing on cloudy nights or YouTube. There's a ton of chatter about these AM5 mounts right now because a lot of people that ordered them early received them within the last two weeks. The camera connected to this Radian 75 quadruplet APO, which is a prototype by the way, is an ASI 2600 MM Pro. If you saw my video about using this camera last year, I did experience an oil leak on this camera, but I used a DSLR sensor cleaning kit to clean it up and it's good to go now. I should have more information about this telescope to share with you soon. All I can tell you now is that it's 400 millimeter focal length at f4.5 and it uses FCD 100 glass. I've used it a handful of times now and the images are impressive. This is one nifty looking setup if you ask me and it's light enough for me to carry the entire thing in and out of the garage as a whole. I just love that. The ZWO carbon fiber tripod that comes with the AM5 is light and stable, but it is low, which is great for stability, but it may limit the placement in your yard due to that higher horizon line. I also made the mistake of not returning the mount to the home position after my last imaging session. It was just stuck frozen after I turned it off, pointed at the sky for my last sub exposure. Unless I'm missing something, there's no way to release the mount in RA and deck like a traditional EQ mount. Fortunately, I reconnected it to the ASI Air Plus and just said, set mount to home position and it returned to its spot. But you probably want to do this after your imaging session's over. Thanks to some pretty great weather over the past week, I was able to pour on the exposure time for this project. I never get to sink this much time into my images. Seriously, this is one of the deeper projects I've ever done. All in all, I collected over 10 hours of exposure time with a monochrome camera and narrow band filters on the AM5. Needless to say, the data was tasty and I thoroughly enjoyed processing this one. If you need help with your image processing, check out my processing guide that I've left a link for in the description. It's over 100 pages long. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing the new backyard and my early results using the AM5. This is the third backyard on the Astro Backyard channel, and I think we might stay here a while. There was a, uh, what was it, a gopher rash? A groundhog. There was a groundhog on the deck yesterday. So that he lives under there somewhere or lives in a ditch or. 
Huh? Nearby. He lives nearby. 